Why do we do anything at all? What makes us get out of bed and want to do something? Is the reason behind performing the tiniest human action and undertaking the greatest adventures essentially the same? What makes the world go round? Here's a thought. We do what we do to find some kind of peace at the end of it. Peace, silence and stillness. Like the stillness of Naranath the man. The legend of Naranath Vrandin is like that of Sisyphus in the Greek mythology. The king who was doomed for eternity to push a huge boulder up a mountain that would then roll back down of its own accord on reaching the top. One little difference though. Naranath lugs a huge boulder up the hill out of his own will and he then lets it roll back down from the top, laughing at it. The same ideas of futility and the cyclical nature of human action in both cases, but two completely different ways of looking at it. While Camus wrote a philosophical treatise debating suicide, happiness and the meaning of life, Indians here have erected a statue of the heretic and pay obeisance to it every year on the first day of the Malayalam month of Tulam. Over here, existentialism is a spiritual endeavor. Roughly a hundred kilometers south of this hill is another hill where till this very day people pay obeisance by lugging boulders up the hill and huge wooden crosses, sometimes on their knees even. It is quite a sight and a pretty humbling one at that to behold the sheer physicality of faith at display here amid gigantic relics of inner burden and penance that men and women have loved up here. Especially considering the effort it took me and my crew to reach here not barefoot, not on our knees, and also with no real burden to wear on our shoulders. We see a lot of CCTV warnings around here, especially near the view, 
but peculiarly enough, no CCTV camera is to be seen. The only camera here seems to be ours, and us looking through it at the splendid view right before us. The warnings would like us to believe that we are being watched too. In a sense, we probably are. If not by CCTVs, maybe by God Himself, or at the very least, in the sense that we are the universe becoming conscious of and watching itself. While trekking with friends in the snow-capped passes in North India, I found it to be what personally means to me as a spiritual experience. The physicality of it, the mental peace and stillness it induces while we move on foot, away from the hustle and bustle of our everyday lives. It's not the mountain we conquer but ourselves, said Edmund Hillary. Is this the same inner purification that pilgrims claim to experience en route to these hilltop shrines? Even in a non-religious capacity, what is the innate need for humans the world over to surmount peaks? Much of our life is comprised of us pushing a boulder uphill. We are either doomed to do so or end up choosing to do so out of our own little madness that gives us the reason to go on. Somewhere, the lines blur between having a choice and not having one. The repetitiveness of our daily lives and our actions varying only in the ways in which we perceive them, finding solace in doing the same things again and again or finding it in doing different things each time. There is something about shooting a video, capturing movement that satisfies my own existential urge to do something. It gives me a chance to capture life and look at it while still being a part of that life and within the clasp of its reality. What makes the world go round? What affirmation do we find in each other's existence, each other's beliefs and sense of purpose? Again, I don't know. But I can only ponder about these things with different people and their own individual pursuit of peace, silence and stillness. <laughs> 